What if instead we had two parallel rails that are connected by some wire? That wire, of course, is going to have some sort of resistance. So we're going to have a resistance on the wire. And let's say we have a magnetic field set up between the two poles. OK. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to push. We're going to apply a force to this um, piece of metal. We're going to push it to the right, which means this piece of metal now has a velocity to the right. This piece of metal has charged objects on it. True? Take our right hand, we point our fingers in the direction of the velocity, curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, our thumb points up, and that means there is going to be a magnetic force that acts upward on it, on the positive charges. That means Unlike the other case, which we were just talking about, where the positive charges don't have anywhere to go and they get stuck, we are actually going to cause current to flow in this situation. So this is going to cause current to flow in that direction. So now, it's getting slightly muddled, so let me draw it again. Oops. We have already determined that there is a force applied to the right. We now know there is current acting upward. This means there is actually current going all the way around this whole circuit. If there is current moving upward in this magnetic field, we point our fingers in the direction of the current, curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, there is a force to the left, a magnetic force that prevents this, um, this piece of metal from moving to the right. Now, that's one way to look at it. But we can also look at it in terms of Faraday's law of induction. The EMF is equal to negative n times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. n is equal to 1 because we only have one loop. But let's look at the direction here. So, talking about Lenz's law. Initially, we have flux, magnetic flux, which is into the bore. As this moves to the right, what happens to the value of that magnetic flux? As the, this object moves to the right, what happens to the value of the magnetic flux? The number of field lines going through that loop. Travis, help me. The area increases, therefore the flux increases, right? As the area increases, this moves to the right, as the area increases, the flux is going to increase. So it is increasing. Okay. If the magnetic flux is increasing into the board, we have an induced magnetic field, which is going to be this winter in what direction? If the induced magnetic field is out of the board, what is the direction of the current in this loop? Tim? Uh, clockwise. The induced magnetic field is out of the board. Oh. Counterclockwise. Notice, that's exactly what we got before. Just looking at it from two different perspectives. Moment. How is the area increasing? Because this whole piece right here is moving to the right. So the area of the loop initially um, will define this distance as x, right? So x is increasing. We'll define this distance here as l. The whole area, x times l, is increasing because x is increasing. OK, so now we know flux magnetic flux equals B A times a cosine of theta. Well, we're try actually trying to figure out the EMF. The EMF is equal to the negative 
of the n times the derivative of magnetic flux as a function of time. n is just equal to 1. So this is the derivative with as a, fu as a function of time of b a cosine theta. Magnetic field is constant, so we can pull that out. Negative times a magnetic field. Cosine of theta. Okay, what is the angle here? It's the angle between, let's just go ahead, Mr. P. Uh, other Mr. P. They're two next to one another. I didn't realize that. Like 0 or, no. zero or 180. Right. You have given us an either or. I'm looking for the correct answer 0 or 180. Correct there, but which one is it? 180. 180. Why? Because it's trying to counteract the other one. Well, actually, it has to do with the direction of the current. I mean, it is because it's counteracting the other one, but if you look, the current is this way. If we take our fingers and curl our fingers in the direction of the current, the area vector is out of the board, and the flux is into the board. So it's going to be times a cosine of 180 degrees. But as this moves to the right and x changes, it does not change the angle, so we can pull that out from the integral times the derivative of the area as a function of time. Well, the area is L times x. OK, so the EMF is equal to, we have a negative times a negative, so B times, well, L doesn't change, times L times dx dt. Class, what is derivative of position as a function of time? Velocity. Look at that. B L times V. Look same thing. Emotional EMF. It's the same exact thing. It's an entirely different derivation and yes, you are actually responsible for knowing how to do both. Don't, don't look at me like that. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't make that decision. Right. 